Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. As many of you know, a big focus on my channel is the narrative plugins. I love using them, I've contributed towards them, and I'm active in the support community. But my channel has a lot of tutorials on them that are unique enough that they're not going to be fitting into the narrative framework anytime soon. But also, it shows you how to begin, because that's what my channel is. So recently, Narrative 3.5 was released. It was released like last week or something, but there was a controversy with Epic where they automatically updated all users, which we will get into shortly in the video but we're also going to cover how to install narrative 3.5 and we're going to cover off all the new features and bug fixes so let's get started So what was the controversy I mentioned at the beginning? So around the beginning of this month, April 1st, ironically, Narrative 3.5 was submitted, the new update. Everything was tested, it was all good, everyone was like, oh, it. For the first week, nobody had access to it, it was very weird. Normally Epic takes their time because they have to distribute it across some servers, but it's fine. During the second week, some people started reporting they were getting it, but it was broken. I couldn't test this because I couldn't download the latest version, all I could do was test the dev version of it, which was working fine for me. So we tried to help as much as we could, that's fine. Um, after a few more days, it became the second week, and and many people still didn't have access to the latest version of Narrative. At this point, some of the community started emailing Epic, say, is there something wrong with the Unreal Launcher, blah 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 blah, stuff like that. The very nice support assistant got back to them within a timely manner, and admitted it was an Epic problem, and they've resolved the issue with the plugin, it should start rolling out to people. And this is where it went downhill. But the absolute life of us, and everybody in the chat I've spoken to, we don't know why this is a thing, but whatever happened when they fixed it, automatically forced the update onto every user who had narrative installed to the engine. As you followed me through the progress of this tutorial, I never install plugins to the engine. I try my absolute hardest to install the plugins locally directly to the project. And for anybody who did this was completely fine. They were untouched, which was good, but not the majority. Unfortunately, the majority installed the plugin just like the Epic Launcher forces you to do and installed it directly to the engine. So all of these games that were in the middle of development, some were about to release, some were days away from a release, or automatically upgraded to the new version of Narrative 3.5 and while you might think well that's not too bad Narrative 3.5 has a big change towards the UI which we'll cover in later and because of this it broke many many games many people couldn't play the games but the second part of it is it didn't update properly it simply replaced what was already there now whenever I show you to upgrade a plugin and whenever anybody asks me the steps are to delete the old plugin and download the new one the reason is when something is removed a replace is not going to delete the missing files it will just simply add next to them and then when those missing files try to be recompiled it can't find what it needs it will error so one key example that we'll look at you can see in the current version of narrative we have bp narrative default ui that is the ui for all of narrative it has been since narrative one it's the core ui for the entire plugin however in narrative 3.5 this has been removed and replaced with two new uis to support common ui and cross-platform controls so it merged them and everybody had issues. The easy fix was to delete it and start again. But for those who didn't have backups and those who were close to deadlines, this is not ideal. Just to reiterate, developers can't choose to auto-update your plugin. We didn't even think Epic could do this, but apparently they can. So yes, that was the big controversy. Now moving on, how do we upgrade to the latest version of Narrative? The bug has actually put a lot of people off because in stressful situations, the last thing they want is to be given a massive upgrade to have to do. So let's crack in. How do we do it? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to close our Unreal and we're going to come in and I'm, I'm going to make a backup of my Narrative because I don't want to lose it just in case. So I'm going to come out of here and in my Unreal projects I'll just make a backup. You should always have a backup of your projects anyway. And then back in here in my plugins folder you can see I've already got Narrative Common UI but I don't want that either because I want to get the latest version so I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to come back into my Narrative 3.5 folder and I'm going to move all of this inside the plugin. Then I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to rename it to Narrative as the same. And I'll also come and get Narrative Common UI because we need that as well and I'll paste it in. And that's all you need to do. So now I'm going to load the project. Upon first loading it you may or may not depending on your platform it'll say that there are some missing modules just tap yes to compile the modules and that's it we're back in the game it's not currently ready to work at the moment there's still some more little bits we need to do if you get any errors about it failing compile compile from source blah 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 anything like that the first step is to come into your narrative plugins delete the binaries in the intermediate folders and try it again that sometimes fixes the issue just make sure you don't copy and paste over the top of the existing one you'll just get loads of errors so now we've got narrative compiled we need to actually set it up in the new method so i'm going to come to my player controller which is where 
where I store my narrative components. So the first thing you'll see is we've got a bunch of errors already on begin play. So what it's doing is because BP narrative default UI has now been removed, we need to do it in a different way. If you've got your other narrative plugin set up, you're already 90% away there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and delete this old setup because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to I'm going to keep the change name there because we do need that. The change name is still good. And you'll see I already have a HUD set up in previous tutorials. If I open this HUD up, you'll see all it is is just a normal widget that I've created and it's got a few bits on it. The important key one is narrative HUD. The narrative HUD is where all your interactable widgets sit. So your text when you're picking options, that will render inside here. Just make sure that you search for the HUD and add it in. The next one you need is the narrative 3 overlay. Here. And we'll just drag that in and I'll make sure it's above this HUD here. And this is where all of your non-interactable goodies are rendered. So things like your dialogue or your quest list, things you can't interact. And that's all you need to do with that so I can hit compile and save. Now the benefit of this new way is you no longer need to link narrative component to it. It will automatically get the component it needs based on the updates it receives. So for example, if you receive quest started, whatever started that quest will pass in the narrative component, whether this is your party system or your friend's narrative system anyway, and it will use that to render the updates. So it all takes care of it. If you don't have a HUD, just make sure you render it to the screen like so. We can now delete the narrative UI because we don't need it. If we hit compile, you'll see all the errors disappear. Now the last change you need to make is you need to right click on your narrative component and remember narrative components should only exist in one place and I'm going to go to add event and I'm going to go to on dialogue again. I'm going to drag off the dialogue and I'm going to check for the free movement line. And I'm going to add a branch after it. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our HUD in, what we've saved up here. So make sure you promote it to a variable. I'm going to drag off and I'm going to get the narrative three, HUD, the one which handles your interactions. And then from here, I'm going to drag off and do open menu and I'm going to connect it to the false. In the activatable widget class, I'm going to set the narrative three dialogue. So the reason we're doing this is if you are using free movement in your game, just like all the previous narrative versions, you can't have free movement on and use player options because free movement gives your player control to keep moving around, but the player options need the mouse to be able to click it and you can't move around and click the UI. It's not how it works in Unreal, unless you've got some weird setup. So what this check does is say, when we begin narrative, check for the free movement. If it's false, then we're going to render the actions so the player can click on the screen. The only other things you may want to enable is the quest journal. You can no longer spawn that using create widget. If you do, you'll get loads of issues. Don't do it that way. The correct way to spawn the quest journal now is, for my case, I'll just add a debug key, but add your keyboard key what you want. Grab your HUD and your interactive HUD, open the menu, and then from the activatable widget, just pick the quest journal like so. Now, depending if this is your first time installing narrative plugins or not, the only other thing you'll have to do is make sure the common UI set is set up. So if you come to edit project settings and go to common input settings, you need to make sure that the narrative input data is selected. This is just a blueprint that controls what input scheme narrative will use for common UI. It's typical how you set common UI up and it's just a data table containing all the different inputs. It's not currently set to enhanced input because Unreal 5.1 it doesn't support it. 5.2 it was experimental. So you could question why on Epic's point of view they've done that but there's probably a good reason. And then once you've done that for each platform you have enabled you just need to make sure that the corresponding control data is set up. So for me by default it's set to mouse and keyboard. I've set my gamepad name to generic. You need to make sure you change that and then I've set up I want all three PS4, Xbox and PCs set up. And then you can do that for Windows, Linux, Mac, everything else you have. The last thing you need to do is your game viewport client needs to be set to common UI, not game. And this basically takes over with common UI. So now I can start the game. You will see I have everything set up. If I come and speak to the guard, everything works just like it always did. And I've got these fancy new keys, fancy new styles when I look around. Everything works just exactly how it should. Nice and simple. And if I press the J key to enable my journal, you can see my journal is here and it will show your address. So what are the brand new features in Narrative 3.5? So the biggest one is the Common UI interface. Common UI is a brand new thing Unreal have added, which they have built for Fortnite, I believe. And it basically solves a lot of UI problems when you have layered UIs. So for example, you go to a form, you click a button and pop-up pops up, you change some settings, another pop-up pops up. And then on the old system, you had to reroute your input to each of these pop-ups to control what it does. So if you, so in this menu right here, if you press up or down, which side is it going through the social menu? 
menu or the menu. Common UI takes care of this by taking over whichever UI is rendered on top, takes the element, the input routing, so you can control specifically what happens. And in this case, if these were at the same time and you use left and right to go across, you can also control that because it'd be one UI. And it does a bunch of different things. So you can see here we have a modal with, we have a modal asking you to quit. And then as you go left or right, it will go confirm or decline. It won't do it high. And that's what the benefit of the other benefit of common UI is it makes cross platform input super simple compared to the old method. So it, it gives you all the icons and everything you need. It takes care of the input switching and shows you the UI on the screen super simply. So if you remember an old tutorial of mine, I showed you how to do interactive input on that one. I said the only way you can detect the control scheme at the moment is via C++. That has now been removed. You literally just drop on. I think it's a common activatable widget and it will tell you the control you need for it. That's just a flow chart of the actual of what I was describing earlier. It takes the input, routes it through the new input route, and it simply puts it to the highest widget and all the child widgets take from there if they need to. So that is the biggest benefit of Narrative 3.5 common UI. Earlier, I mentioned BP Narrative Default UI is being removed. So if I press Control P and search for Narrative Default UI, you will see the only thing we have is the old rich text style, which we still use. It's still used in a lot of places. But Narrative has now been replaced with two widgets. The first one is the BP Narrative 3 overlay. This is your static elements, your non-interactable elements. So this is where your dialogue lines are going to be. This is where your quest updates are going to appear. If you want to change anything on here, you go in. It's the exact same thing, just with very little differences. You can come in. You've got all your functions. On dialogue began, it does that. On NPC line started, it renders it to the screen, just like normal. For all your quest stuff, it's also in there in functions as well. The second new menu we have is the Narrative 3 menu dialogue. This is the actual part that is interactable for Narrative. Currently, because the quests aren't interactable as a UI, it will just show the dialogue options. And they've been moved to a brand new widget blueprint narrative button dialogue option. It's now got some epic text, a selector, and a new hint icon, which you can set inside the dialogue. And you can say stuff like begins quest, gives item, stuff like that, anything you want to. Another change that's been added is that it was temporarily removed to a Barlow font because it looked nicer. This Barlow font was causing a lot of international issues with languages such as Russian or Chinese. It only supported very few languages. It's now been moved back to Roberto because that supports a lot of languages. Next, if we jump into some dialogue, you can see we now have a dialogue speaker name. So sometimes you'll have your speaker name, your speaker ID, where you want it to be one thing, but then going through changing it with spaces or without was a problem. Now you can come in and say, this bridge guard will be known as Gary. Just like that. Super, super simple. The speaker name will override the speaker ID. If you don't set a speaker name, it will simply use the speaker ID. One thing that has been added back in that unfortunately isn't working yet. So this is just another bug. Copying and pasting text has added back in, which was a huge feature that people love. So where you can come in and say player, hello YouTube, if I copy this, you should be able to paste in. For some reason, this doesn't work. It was supposed to work and it worked in the dev version, but it's not working in the live version. So that's onto the bug list. One big key thing that has been removed is that the waypoint system has been removed from narrative quests. If I go into the new a random quest, before on most go to locations and such, you had a show waypoint option. This has now been removed due to several issues and compatibility issues with narrative navigator. So just to appease those who don't own narrative navigator, I have deployed a mod online with Ruben's full permission. He's fully happy for this to go live and I will continue to try and support this as best I can where it adds it back into narrative 3.5. Really, really easy to install. Just download it, stick it in, add the little interfaces you need from here and you will get up and working. Everything is step by step. I might even add a video one day. Some other changes that have taken place. When you're loading, it used to call all the UI updates. So you'd see quest started, quest started, quest started, quest load completed, quest completed. It no longer does that. It will only do it in the background for you. Conditions which would stop dialogue running. So if I had conditions on both of these and they failed, but you called begin dialogue, it would crash narrative. That has now been fixed. The quest journal didn't have a scroll bar when you had many tasks. That has also been fixed. There was a very unique bug that if you start, start and stop, start and stop, start and stop dialogue very rapidly, you could freeze the player responses on screen. So you couldn't actually do anything. That has also now been fixed. And if you backlink to a dialogue, which had no text. So if I had a dialogue here, like so, if you backlink to it like so, it used to crash. That no longer is an issue either. And that is the biggest changes in Narrative 3.5, ladies and gentlemen. There are already tons of bugs. As you can imagine, a big upgrade like this, there will be bugs. They're rapidly getting completed off, which is very, very nice. And that will hopefully come out in Narrative 3.51 after a bunch of them. Any issues, ladies and gentlemen, please let me know below. Feel free to join the Narrative Discord. We can always help you out there. My name is Decryption, and I will see you next time.